right. And all right, so good afternoon and welcome. My name is Tara Feiner and I am the Director of Jewish Family Services of Greater Dayton. On behalf of the JFS Program Committee, chaired by Marianne Bernstein and Helene Gordon, and the JFS Advisory Board, chaired by Michelle Dritz, welcome to our session. Today's session is the third and final of our Technology and the Independent You uh, series that we have had our speaker, Marianne Bailey, the senior tutor. And today's session is, what is social media and do I really need it? At the end of today's session, we will have the Q and A's, we'll have 10 minutes set aside for that. And what everybody's been waiting for, the raffles. We're ready for those at the end, for the people who have attended the sessions throughout. So we are ready for that and that will be done at the end. Before we get started, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. First, um, you have control over your microphone and your camera. Typically that's in the bottom left of your screen. Some technology, it's in different places. If there is a line through your mic or a line through the camera, those are disabled. Uh, you can re-enable them if you want. But like I said, we're gonna keep everybody muted um, for now so that there's not background noise. If you, can, if you have questions, you can use the chat box. At the bottom of your screen, typically, there's a little bubble that says chat. You can type in there, you hit enter, and the chat comes up. We're gonna save questions for the end. And I will read off the questions from the chat box. And then if we have people who are having trouble with chat, we'll pull them in too. Um, this is being recorded and it's going live on Facebook. But if you're watching on Facebook, you're not gonna be able to interact with us and our speaker the same way. And finally, you can react to the presenter. Um, sometimes the, at the bottom, you will have the hands clapping or the thumbs up. Um, we find those don't show up consistently. So if you, it's possible they might not be showing up. But after all those housekeeping items, I think I've hit everything. I have the privilege to turn over the session to our speaker, Marianne Bailey, the senior tutor who is gonna to talk to us about what social media is, the types of social media from social networking to media sharing like photos and videos, to group uh, being able to interact with groups and group chats and so on. And also how we can be cautious about how we engage in cyberspace. So with that, I am gonna turn this over to Mary Ann Bailey. Thank you. You have to unmute yourself, Marianne. You're still muted. Okay, can you hear me now? There you go. You're good. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. How is everybody? I wanted to um, thank Tara for the great introduction. And um, I wanna be respectful about how everybody's feeling um, right now. If everybody will just give me one word about how you're feeling today um, in the chat box, um, that would be great. Let's just let us know that you're that you're good or that you're sad or that you're whatever it is that you're is. Just just give us a, a one word description of, of how you're feeling. While you're doing that, um, I am going to go ahead and start screen sharing for us. Um, We've got a presentation today, and then I'm going to give you a little bit quick lesson on some Facebook stuff as well. And let's see. I think. Screen share. Okay, let me minimize this. There we go. Can everybody see my screen? Thumbs up. So today is um, what is social media and do we really need it? Social media is defined as websites and applications that enable users to create and share content or to participate in social networking. Um, in the most basic sense, social media is in a shift in how people discover, read and share news, information and content. So these days, just by using Zoom, you are using social media. Social media has become um, the most popular way of um, communicating these days, especially with COVID going on. Um, you know, it's it's how we 
we communicate. It's how we share things. It's how we're getting information out there to others and receiving information. So um, with that in mind, um, let's move to the next screen. Um, here is a list of all, not all, okay? There are hundreds of social media, um, but this is a list of the uh, most common um, social media that you're gonna come across. Look at the number of users, 2.23 billion users on Facebook. That is huge. Um, raise your hand. How many of you guys are on Facebook? Yeah, like most of us, right? Um, followed by, um, you know, you've got down there, you've got YouTube. How many of us watch um, videos on YouTube? Huge, right? Kitten, kitten videos left and right, right? So um, Instagram users, um, anybody on Instagram? Okay, we're gonna go over that a little bit today. Um, and TikTok, how many people um, know about TikTok? Anyone? TikTok's fun. It's, um, TikTok has become, everybody thinks it's for the teenagers these days, but it's a lot of, um, a lot of senior citizens and, and um, middle-aged people that are hopping on TikTok and sharing videos and dancing and, and lip syncing and stuff like that. And they're just using it as a fun outlet to be able to express themselves and, and to be able to have something fun to do um, while everybody was on lockdown um, at home. So um, we're gonna go over here a few of the platforms that are out there. Um, Facebook, it's a popular social network website that allows people to create profiles, upload photos and video, um, send messages and keep in touch with family, friends and colleagues, right? So I know that a lot of people out there have gotten in touch with people, um, maybe from their past. Oh, look, you know, it pops up on your screen. Oh, you might know so-and-so or be friends with so-and-so. And what about friending this person? And a lot of times people have found friends of their past and friends that um, maybe they've lost communication with along the way. And they, um, they, they've lost chat with it. So what, um, you know, if you are looking for people to connect with, um, Facebook is definitely a good way um, to do that because there's a lot of um, people that are hooking up with, not hooking up, but, hook, you know, finding friends that are um, on Facebook and being able to communicate and share photos. Um, anybody on Twitter? You know, Twitter um, these days, it's a website that allows, it's kind of what they call like a mini blog. And it allows people to express their thoughts. And a lot of times you can get news and media sharings on Twitter a lot faster and a lot easier than you can other social media networks. Um, there's been times when there's stuff going on in my neighborhood and I'm like, what in the world? And I go and I look at WHIO's website and I can't find anything on there. But sure enough, there's postings on there from people in the community saying, hey, this is going on or stay away from this intersection. There's, um, you know, a bad accident going on and this is what happened. Um, so people are able to share on there before even the, the media can get out there to share it with us. So tweeting is definitely um, a popular way to do that. Um, it's a good way to also follow up with um, sports teams or maybe different groups that are going on. And the nice thing is, is that it's little snippets of, um, of words that express what's going on and maybe a picture about it. It's not big, long paragraphs. Don't go on Twitter expecting to read um, long paragraphs about stuff because that's not gonna happen and it's not allowed. Um, if you're interested in photographs or um, different craft ideas and stuff like that, Pinterest and Instagram, they're definitely the way to go with that. Um, and I've got a screen here a little bit farther on with some pictures about that. So we'll go over that when we get to that screen a little bit. Um, but if you're into photography um, or you're into um, seeing other people's photography and stuff like that, Instagram is definitely the way to go um, on with that one. And then, like I mentioned earlier, Zoom is social media these days. Skype, Zoom, Facebook Messenger, um, they're all free internet, um, voice over internet protocol. And it means it goes through the internet in order to connect instead of a phone system. So you can make phone calls using Skype. You can use uh, make phone calls 
using Facebook Messenger or, um, you know, like we are here on Zoom, we're able to share information with each other and to be able to um, share other stuff such as photos and video and stuff like that. Um, so don't discount on um, that for, don't discount, sorry, um, Zoom, whatever, for being social media as well. Um, Zoom has become the most, um, most used messaging system since the whole COVID um, pandemic has happened. And they've grown just leaps and bounds. Luckily for us, I'm sure that you saw in the news that Zoom was having some problems with their safety and people Zoom bombing. And they made some changes to be able to confront that. And I think other messaging services have also learned um, from that as well. And they've encrypted it. There was an update um, for recently. If you know anybody who's having trouble getting on Zoom and they're not, they've been on Zoom before, there was an update for on May 30th that you have to update um, before you're allowed to use, continue using Zoom. So if anyone's having trouble, that might be their problem. Um, they'll need to go to zoom.us and update their program in order to move on or update it on their phone. Hello, Marianne, this is Paul. I'm on, I don't know if you can see me or not. Hi. Oh, hi, Paul. Hi, uh, I just got on and I heard your end, you were talking about Zoom a little bit and I finally Zoomed in. Well, welcome and thanks for joining us. Sure, absolutely. Are you in the same building or are you somewhere else? I'm at home. Oh, okay, you're at home, okay. Well, hello, Tara, and hello, uh, uh, Teresa. Welcome, Paul. We have all of our underway with the presentation. If you could please mute your phone. We're going sure. to preserve all questions to the end by chat. Yes, I sure will. Okay. okay. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, Paul. Okay. So another reason that social media has become so popular and so used is because there's so many different ways of getting news out there, um, local and national news. Um, I know that I don't take the time to sit on the couch these days and, and watch the news. Um, first, I find it very depressing. And, but more importantly, I just don't have the time or take the time to do it. So I hop on my phone and I look a lot of times, you know, I look at the WHIO app to see what's going on locally. But I also hop on Facebook um, to see what's going on on a nationwide basis. You know, before when we used to watch the news, um, and I'm sure a lot of you still do, I'm not discounting that at all. But if you want more of a broad picture, instead of the few minutes where they're showing um, national news on social media, you can, I mean, on, on the news, you can hop on social media and go through Facebook and watch videos of stuff that's happening, you know, right now with the um with the protests and stuff you can hop on social media and be able to watch what's going on in pittsburgh or philadelphia which is incredibly sad by the way um everywhere um and be able to watch that and i know that sometimes that can get a little overwhelming and i just want to put out the disclosure that it is okay to turn off you know a lot of people get um hung up in the fact that they have to be on social media all the time watching the news it's okay to, to, to not do that as well. But if you want a more broader view of stuff, then hop on social media, look on Twitter and see what's, what people are posting. Hop on Facebook and be able to look through the videos. There's um, great videos on, on social media regarding everything that you could possibly wanna learn. Um, YouTube, you know, YouTube is the second largest search engine out there, but it's also community driven, meaning that you and I and other people like us post videos on there and we share it with other people. And that's what the whole premises of social media is, is getting information out there and sharing it, whether it's video, whether it's text, whether um, it's a blog or just snippets of stuff. It's, it's sharing information and expecting other people to be able to see it and to benefit from that information. So um, there's a lot of, of videos about just everything that you could possibly imagine out there um, in order for us to be able to um, benefit from that. Um, and then there's what I call um, community news. So community news to me might be information, um, say, 
um, your group here. You know, Tara puts out a lot of great information and, and a lot of great programming and, and shows out there. Um, so she wants to be able to share that with you. She wants to get that information out there and to, for you to benefit from that information. So um, there's a lot of great community news out there for people to be able to get information about what's going on um, in their community or in their groups that they belong to. And if you're not on social media benefiting from that, you're missing out on quite a bit of um, great information. And then social causes. Um, so I just took a snippet from Google down here. Um, to me, the easiest and, and most effective way for us to find out what is going on out there um, within groups that are trying to change our world for the better is on social media. And if you're only getting information from one, from one source or maybe two sources, maybe you're reading the newspaper or you're watching your local news, you're only getting what that newscast, um, what their opinions are as far as that news channel. You're not getting the information from a big, much big broader picture. Um, social networks um, can foster social causes um, because their um, structure is being re relational. Right, so each of us sharing this information, multiple viewpoints and multiple information out there, um, rather than individualistic. Again, so news channel, newspaper versus a lot of people sharing um, some great information, um, which helps in constructive patterns of inclusion. Connectivity and contagion are the aspects of social networking that increase support for social causes. So, for example yesterday on Instagram, Instagram announced that they were going to do Blackout Tuesday. And what that was, was a way for people to share their um, support in Black Lives Matter and in other um, injustices going on. And so what they did was they encouraged everybody to blacken their screen um, on Instagram yesterday. And what that meant was they put up, and I'll show you here, um, this blank is, is black. That's what your screen looked like on Instagram. They literally showed nothing. And so I didn't blacken my screen, but I also didn't post anything all day yesterday. And part of it was in support of, of stuff that's going on. But the other part was that it had all become a little overwhelming for me. Um, I was watching protests everywhere and I just like, I, I can't focus on work. So I, I didn't post on social media yesterday for two reasons. One, I was overwhelmed and one, I was showing my support for um, what, everything that was going on. And so a lot of times um, they, when there's stuff going on, whether it be religion, um, whether it be political, whether it be um, just in support of things that are going on in your local community or within a, a, any specific group. It's a great way for people to get the word out there to um, be able to support and to be able to um, know what's going on within those active communities. So again, if you're not on social media, you're missing a lot of different um, news and views out that way. So with that said, I wanted to share with you um, a cup, one thing that one of, when I'm out there teaching, um, one of my most common questions are, how do I upload a photo in Facebook? And so I just wanted to give you a quick little lesson um, in this presentation about how to do that. Um, I've got some pictures here that I went on there. Facebook has a new layout. Every year um, since 2006, Facebook has changed their layout of how they do their stuff. And I was reading an article yesterday about this, um, looking for an answer as to why, because everybody asked me, you know, why, why, every time I log on Facebook, it seems like there's changes and I don't understand how to use it. And Facebook has put out an art saying that they've changed, they change it for a number of different reasons. One, they want to keep it fresh and, and apparently confuse people from it, but they also um, need to change it so that it updates with different technology that's going on. Um, sometimes it may be technology within our smartphones of how it registers and search does stuff. Sometimes it's search engines, how the alg algorithm is um, reading information and processing it and 
giving um, priority to people that post. So have you noticed sometimes you may be sitting there thinking, oh, I haven't seen post from June. Um, my friend Sarah, I haven't seen any posts all the whole entire month of June or May from this person. Is she okay? And you go back and you look at her her um, her her page and you see that she's posted maybe 20 times and you didn't see it in your stream. Well, that's Facebook's algorithm and, and how they're processing stuff and how they think that they want to share that information with you. Um, so, but I wanted to share with you um, how to um, post a photo. That's the most common question. People are like, I don't understand how to post a photo in Facebook. So I wanted to just share that with you real quick. Um, I need to minimize this and I'm going to stop sharing this page and I'm going to go over here to a live view of my Facebook and share with you my stream of what's going on on my Facebook right now. This is when you get on your page, um, if you're So up here, there's a home button. If you hit home, this is gonna take you to the very top of your stream. This is gonna show you all your friends' postings and, and stuff that's going on with that. But if you click on your name, that shows you all the stuff that you've shared with stuff. And then if you just hit home again, or you could do it right here as well. Um, normally, if you wanna share a picture, you click here where it says, what's on your mind, Marianne? You click on here and you click on this photo button right here where it says photos, um, tag friends, stuff like that. You hit on photos. And then you choose what photo that you wanna choose. Over here, there's um, downloads where that shows where your downloads. These are your documents where maybe Word documents or stuff like that is stored. Um, but here is pictures and you would click on pictures and it would open up your pictures that you've stored on your computer. Um, oh, sorry, my dog was, was dreaming. Um, so then you hit, um, you click on the picture and then down here in the right hand corner, you hit open. And this is, um, I have the old layout for that. The pictures that I've shared in my, um, in my presentation, is the new layout. And I went to my mom's um, Facebook and took those screenshots. They're a little bit blurry. So that's why I wanted to share it live with you um, so that you could do that. But it's, it's basically the same premises. Um, and then you, it uploads the picture here for you. And I'm not gonna type anything here, but if you wanted to type something, this is where you would type that. But I'm gonna show you why here in a second. Um, and then you tag anybody maybe that you wanna tag. Um, so you hit tag friends and who were you with? So I could say in here that I was with Tara and I'm going to tag her and that puts that little tag there. And what that does is that shows you when, when someone logs into their Facebook and it shows up on their stream, um, Tara will get a notification saying that I shared this photo with her. Um, and then anybody who's following Tara as well would get a notification saying, hey, Tara was, was tagged here in this photo. Um, sometimes people see that, sometimes they don't. It just kind of depends on what the algorithm is doing for people. Um, so I'm gonna post this photo. And so if you see here, it says that I posted this and Tara was tagged, I'm with Tara. All right, so. The thing that people don't realize is, is that once you post stuff, you know, people will go in there and they'll post a comment and then they'll post another comment and they don't realize that they can go in there and they can edit stuff. So if you look at it, these three dots here in the right hand corner, anytime you see three dots in something, it means that there's a menu behind it. They may be vertical, they may be horizontal. If you click on these three dots, that pulls up another menu. And I'm like, oh, I wanted to type something there. So I hit edit. And it's going to open this post again. And now I'm going to say teaching a class and demonstrating how to post photos. 
Now I could have said whatever I wanted to say, but I chose to say this. And so I can go back in after the fact and, and type in stuff that I wanted to, to do. Um, down here, it says feeling um, activity. And you can go in here and you could choose different stuff. You can choose, oh, I want to choose from feelings. That's going to pop up a menu. And then I'm going to say, oh, I'm happy that, that I'm teaching. And I'm going to click on save. And what that does is see now we have that there, um, my, what I typed is in there. Now, if I decided I didn't want to keep this photo anymore, oh, I, this really isn't relative, or maybe it was time sensitive. Maybe it was about an event that was going to happen on this coming Saturday. And then after Monday, if you looked at it and you're like, oh, that's just not relevant anymore, you can still go in there and you can click on here and say delete and delete the entire post. So I just wanted to be able to, to um, share that. And another new feature that they just came out with is um, see here where it says create room. If I click on, and I don't know if everybody sees that, but if I click on that create room, that is going to create a chat room that you can invite your friends or family to join with you um, and to be able to kind of like a Zoom, but a little bit easier in Facebook. The nice thing is, is that not everybody has to have a Facebook account in order to be in this room. So say you just wanted to um, chat with your friends or be able to uh, share a birthday party or something like that in there, you can go in there and you can create a room and um, that does that. I think they're allowing up to 50 people in there right now, unless that's changed, but they just came out with this little feature. So that's a nice feature as well. So I am going to um, stop sharing this and get back to the presentation. But like I said, that's the most common question I have is, is how, to, um, how to upload photos. So I just wanted to share that with everybody so that you could, um, you could see that. Um, sorry, everybody. It's, um, there, can you guys see that Tara? Can you see that? Can you send me a message. It should be the presentation, Tara. And I can't see you, so you need to send it to me in the chat box. I can I can see it. Okay, you can see the presentation. I'm not pulling up now. It's a little sluggish. Okay, I just want to make sure that we were that we were seeing the same thing. Okay, so this was how to share a photo. Um, like I said, it was a little bit blurry. That's why I wanted to share that live with you. The other thing that I wanted to make you guys aware of is that in Facebook and only Facebook, um, it's, it's weird why they do this, but um, Facebook has a legacy setting. And what it does is it allows you to be able to set somebody, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a family member, um, to be able to set your memorialization settings. Um, they used to be called legacy settings and now they're memorialization. So what it does is if you were to pass away, this gives one person, or I think, it, I think you might have the ability to do multiple people, but it gives somebody the, the way in order to be determine what happens to your Facebook after you pass away. Um, so the way you do that is this is the new layout for the, everyone that has that. Um, you go into um, on this right hand corner over here, there's a little arrow and you hit click this arrow and you go into um, settings and privacy. And it, once you click on that, there's another um, option to choose settings and it'll bring you to this page. And I know this might be a little bit blurry too and I apologize for that. Um, but what it does is down here, um, it says memorialization settings and you click on that box and then you type in who, um, that, and it has to be somebody that's in Facebook. You type in who you want to determine what happens, um, to your page and you can go in there and it also has settings. Do you want them to close down your Facebook 
or do you want them um, to set it as a memorialization page? And that just shows, um, it'll go through and it'll show like your pictures and it's kind of a way to, um, to, to honor the person that's passed away um, and be able to share their, their life with other people um, for a while. So um, I encourage everybody um, to do that. If you need help, um, give me a call. I will walk you through it. Um, you don't want to leave your Facebook open um, after you're not on it anymore because it just creates, it's, it would become an unused account and people that scam and people that hack into stuff tend to find those accounts that aren't being used as much and they think, oh, that person must have passed away or something. And they tend to hack into them, take control of them. And, you know, Facebook has a way where you can um, request money from people and um, you don't want them taking advantage of that and requesting money from maybe um, friends that aren't aware that you passed away maybe. And they're sending money thinking, oh, um, you know, Sue Ellen needs, needs help. Um, I'm, I'm gonna send her $500. And then once that's gone, it's gone. So you don't want people being taken advantage of. So you definitely wanna plan for what happens to your social media um, should something happen to you. Facebook is the only one that does this setting but um, maybe in your will or some other plan or at least verbally discussed with some discuss with somebody um, what your intentions are, what you want and how people can get into your social media to shut it down for you. Um, Twitter, Instagram, like I said, none of those have this setting, but you want to verbally make sure that that happens. All right, social media can be fun, right? You can make new friends. You can chat with your friends and your family, or you can even play games on it. You know, bridge, mahjong, Scrabble, more. Um, any games that you can imagine are, are out there on the internet, and a lot of times it's through social media. Like I know Facebook has a a, a lot of games that you can find as well. Um, so you know, if you're bored, and a lot of us have been, we were locked inside. You know, we we couldn't go play um, bridge with, with our bridge group or um, different stuff going on and being around people, you know, you hop online, find something to do. It doesn't have to be conversing with other people necessarily. Um, there's so much that we can do online. We can armchair surf. We can, if you don't know what armchair surfing is on, it's hopping on Google maps and taking a look at, um, I, I really, I like doing this when, when I'm bored and I don't have anything to do or I need to clear my head, I'll hop on Google Maps and I will, um, in the right-hand corner, there's a um, little peg man. Um, I fondly nicknamed him Ed after my grandfather. Um, I take him and I drop him just ran randomly somewhere on the map and I'm able to look around and tour um, past homes or uh, what's, you know, different neighborhoods that I randomly drop him in, or you could use it to, you know, oh, this is where I grew up, or this is, you know, where I went to school. What does it look like now? You know, that's all part of social media is, is like I said, you know, gathering information and, and being able to share stuff. Um, so if you're bored, like I said, hop online and find something to do. Okay, so we talked a little bit earlier about Instagram and Pinterest. If you are looking for something fun to do, you can hot create an account in Pinterest. And Pinterest is a way to share ideas, um, maybe, um, and I think the next one, no. I probably should have moved this up. Hold on a second, we'll come back to all this. Okay, so Pinterest, um, is, is this website where you share different photos and a lot of times it's you can upload your own photos but a lot of times it's sharing photos maybe that you found online that you thought other people might benefit from seeing so maybe it's home decorating or fashion maybe it's crafty ideas or a lot of people use it to find new recipes you know i'm tired of cooking the same thing or i'm tired of cooking for one person what what can i what recipes are out there that would be easy for me to do and Pinterest, you find these recipes, you can find, um, you know, house decorating stuff and you share it to your board. And, and so they kind of come up along your stream. If you're looking on your phone, on your phone, this is a phone sh uh, shot from my phone. And here it had 
uh, this chai seed recipe. It had uh, something about dog owners. It had this meme going on up here. Um, it just, you kind of scroll through and you see different stuff going on that other people post. And that's what's driving it is other people are posting pictures and stuff that interests them. And when you sign up, you go through and you choose what kind of things are interest to you. Is it dogs? Is it cats? Is it, um, you know, different um, organization tips or different stuff? You choose what really interests you, um, you know, whether it's cleaning tips and stuff. I've gotten a lot of home cleaning tips that I never would have thought of off of uh, Pinterest. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, let's get back to where we were. And then Instagram. If you're into photos, I would strongly recommend opening up an Instagram account. Instagram account, people share things that are important to them as well. And it's usually pictures about um, different stuff that's going on in their life and in the world that they've been out um, doing. You'll see some advertising and some stuff like that on there as well. Uh, but most of it is um, user generated. And um, as in this one with his dogs and, and there, there's people's birds. Um, you can, and what's really nice is um, on this next one, it says hashtag. What is a hashtag? It's a word or phrase preceded by a hash sign used on social media websites and applications, especially Twitter and Instagram to identify messages in a specific way. And so here, um, if you'll see down on here on the bottom of this photo, you see my mouse moving. Um, today's, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's down here on the right-hand corner. It says, um, hashtag weekly fluff. Okay. Now some other hashtags that could have been, um, used in this photo could have been, um, hashtag golden retrievers or hashtag dogs of Instagram or, um, hashtag, uh, birds of Instagram or whatever. And so anytime somebody searched for golden retrievers or birds or cockatoos or whatever those are, um, you know, whatever it is that they searched for, if you use that hashtag or some words that they were searching for within your hashtag, you would, they would find your photo. And so I uploaded some photos on mine recently and did not use hashtags in them. And then I got maybe one or two likes out of it. So then I went back and revisited those and in see here where it has this chat bubble. You click on that and you can comment on people's um, on people's photos. So I went back in and clicked on that and um, put in hashtags in a comment underneath mine. And then I got like 10 or 12 likes out of it or, or sometimes even more. Um, because people were able to find my photo based on those hashtags. So when you um, are watching a show, and a lot, a lot of times you'll see actors and actresses, they'll, they'll be in a sitcom or something, and they'll be like, hashtag moody mom or whatever it is. Um, that's what that means. It means that people are able to search for stuff. The two um, websites that are mostly using hashtags are Instagram and Twitter. The other ones, um, Pinterest does it somewhat, but it's most effective in Instagram and Twitter. So, but I wanted you guys to be aware of um, what a hashtag was. So when you're hearing this, you can relate to this and be like, oh, it's just a way for people to be able to find my information. Um, like right now, people will use um, hashtag Black Lives Matter. And so when they go into Instagram, they type in um, that they're looking for, um, it'll show a list of trending hashtags, or they can type in that they're searching for Black Lives Matter. And everybody that tagged that um, to their photo, all those photos will pop up and be visible to them, um, kind of organized way, instead of having to go through everybody's um, photos about everything. Okay, so we talked earlier about YouTube being, um, just seeing how we're doing here on time. Um, we talked about YouTube being um, a social media and it is, it's also a search engine. So um, the five top um, videos on, on, on YouTube, luckily they give us this information readily. 
It's um, the top five is comedy, then gaming, then vlogs. If you don't know what a vlog is, it's kind of like a blog where people put in information about their stories, but it's um, them talking, vi creating a video about it. So it's a video blog, vlog. Um, How-to videos and product reviews. If you need to know how to do something, trust me, go to YouTube and search how do I and whatever it is. How do I um, fix my washing machine? I had a, a bad pump on my washer. I went on YouTube. I videoed how to do that. I ordered the part on Amazon. And what would have cost me hundreds of dollars to have somebody come out and do it, I fixed it for $11. Um, so thank you, YouTube, for that. <laughs> okay. Um, another thing to think about is maybe creating a blog to tell your legacy. What is, what is your legacy? What, what passions do you have? Um, share your story with people. Um, go in there and create um, a website. And it's really easy. Um, you, the easiest one out there to use is Google Driven. It's owned by Google. And it's called a uh, blogger. So if you go to blogger, my phone, for me's sake, Google. Um, if you go to blogger.com, um, it walks you through how to create a blog. And it's a lot of fun. It's um, making sure that that future generations um, know what you did in life or know what your passion was. Or um, if you want to share how to do something or um, maybe create like a, a blogging, like I want to create reviews about different products that I put out there or, or different books or whatever it is that your passion is, you can share it in a blog with other people. Um, and then you can post that link on Facebook and be able to get the word out there about it as well. So you can see that different, um, different social media can tie together um, and help each other out and be able to get information out there about each other. Again, social media can be really, really fun. And you guys have heard me say this in other, uh, in other lessons, um, but you do have to be safe. You have to watch out um, that you're not giving out your name, your full name. Don't give people your middle name. It's not important. I mean, it is important to you, but it's not important that you tell other people on social media because um, it's just a way for other people having information about you. Don't share information about, you know, um, anything that would maybe tie people back to your passwords or um, different information like that. Don't give out your social security numbers or, you know, your address, your banking information. Um, definitely don't give out your Medicare info. Um, some people think, oh, that's not important. Trust me, people are scamming people. You know, they're, they're charging stuff against their Medicare accounts. And even though it's not costing you anything, it's still raising prices for Medicare in general. Um, and so you don't want people um, scamming you for Medicare information and, or, or making it so that you cannot create, um, that you can't get the care or um, different stuff that you need from your doctors in a timely fashion because maybe somebody put bogus information in there about you. So definitely protect that information. Um, don't put pictures on social media about your grandchildren. You know, I see people posting stuff on there about their grandchildren and that's fine, but make sure that you have a conversation with, um, with your children about what is okay to post about their children on social media. Um, don't put things like they have a baseball practice every Tuesday at five o'clock on there because that's telling other people, oh, look, their house is empty every Tuesday at five o'clock let's go break into it. That's important for the children, for the, for you, if you go visit their games, you don't want to know, make them aware that you, that where the child is um, at a specific time or that homes are empty or anything like that. So watch for things like bulletin boards in the background um, that show maybe where this child is at or baseball uniforms that have the name that they can go and find out or stuff like that. So just be aware and, and like I said, have a conversation with the family about what is acceptable and what is not acceptable for you to be sharing um, about other people's children um, on social media. Um, and then um, I encourage you guys, my mom can be extremely guilty about this sometimes and I've had a crackdown on her as well. Um, fact check what is going on um, in social media. Um, don't just go out there posting things 
um, because somebody else shared it and assuming that it's right. Make sure that you fact check it, make sure that it really is legit. There's been times when people have posted, oh, this guy um, mugged and raped this woman and did this and whatever. It's, it's And sometimes people that are vindictive will post stuff out there and maybe that person really did not, but they, you know, this guy broke up with somebody and she's victim, you know, upset or whatever. So she posts that and then other people start posting it. Now this person's being sought after for doing something that he didn't really do all because of social media. So just watch what you're posting, you know, don't be scared, but just make aware, be aware, just be aware. Um, you know, keep your updated uh, devices updated, um, keep your software updated. Um, if you need to know how to do this, you know, contact me, I will gladly walk you through all this. Um, it's something that it's important to make sure that um, hackers can't get into, um, into your system. And then never assume that somebody um, is, is, is just because you're talking to somebody, don't assume that, that you know who they are. Um, they, it, sometimes men are out there and, and posing as women, vice versa, or posing as famous people. Don't assume just because somebody has a name on, on social media that that's who they are. Um, so where do I start? Find something that interests you. Again, if you're looking for pictures or ideas, go to Pinterest. If you're looking for bits of information and more links to stuff like that, go on um, Twitter. Um, use social media for what fits your needs. Um, again, if you don't know what that is, call and chat with me. And have it, I'll talk to anybody who wants to know more information. Um, you know, have a conversation with somebody. Hey, what do you use on social media? Um, know some stuff like that. Um, again, we talked about it can relieve boredom. It can help with loneliness um, and it can educate you. Um, you know, I have learned more from the internet um, than I ever did in school because there's just so much out there to, um, to be learned. All right, I think we're out of time and we're out of um, screen. So if anybody has any more questions, um, I'm happy to answer. All right, so if we can, so Marianne, my first question is, can we share your PowerPoint? With those Absolutely. Who are today? So if you yeah. email it to us, we will email it to those who are on today. Sure. And that way we have that information. Sure. So I'm looking to see, we don't have questions in the chat. I'm looking to see if anyone has a, wants to raise a question. While I'm Here, what I'll do is I'll send it to you as a PDF so everybody can open it. Maybe not everybody has PowerPoint. That would be perfect. Usually sure. we would, I appreciate that we would convert it. Yeah. So while I'm looking, I wanna thank Marianne. Um, I, re I know it's a round of quiet applause, but it was a really informative presentation. And what's key is there is such power in social media in how we can inform ourselves and interact with others and overcome isolation. And especially times like this, you know, Zoom just boomed with all the, all the, the pandemic of what's going on. Absolutely. But we also have to be informed consumers as Marianne brought up. You can't believe everything that's posted and looking at different uh, media sites helps with that. Um, don't overwhelm yourselves. One of the key things out there right now is any issue that's going on in the world, you can get information 24 seven and becomes extremely overwhelming and you can- And addictive. Yourself. And you need to separate, you know, don't feel like you have to consume information 24 seven just because it's available 24 seven. You can shut down and that's critical. Um, and then the security, we have had issues where we've had clients who have been um, unfortunately victims of fraud through Facebook Messenger, where there was, you know, this great opportunity for a loan and they moved forward with it and it was fraud, it was a scam. Um, I have a friend who I get messages from Facebook Messenger sometimes. So I think we've all been gotten a message that you scratch your head. That doesn't sound like my friend. You know, if you would scratch your head and said that doesn't sound right, contact your friend. Don't assume it's them. Sometimes we're hacked. Um, and you know, if something seems to be to be true, call at least one other person, if not two other people, to talk about it before jumping. Um, and then the security. One of the things, and this really resonated with me when Marianne talked about it, is being very careful about what you share on Facebook. How many people have seen those surveys? Play along with me. I want to learn about you. 
What was your first car? What was your, where did you grow up? How many siblings do you have? What's your first dog's name? Think about those questions. That's a lot all of, of getting that information for scamming. A lot of those are security questions with your banks, credit bureaus, and other entities. A lot of them ask, what was your first car? Make and model. Where did you go to school? Where did you live? So as fun as those surveys may seem, when you play along, I encourage people not to do them because it's a way of capturing personal information. Um, so be wary about that. All right, so are there, first, big thank you. Are there any questions? Tara, I saw Beverly ask something about Twitter and I'm curious what she wanted to know. Okay, I can Twitter. see it come up. So Beverly, we can unmute you if you want to yeah, ask. I don't know how to use it. How to use it? Um, when you sign, it's, it's, it's really, really easy. When you sign up, um, you're, it's going to ask you like all other social media, what are your interests? And that's going to give you a way to kind of start getting information rolling through your, your stream about different information, whether it's political, whether it's, um, different groups and stuff like that. And that stuff's going to instantly start scrolling through there. When you look at, at here, let me, can, Tara, can I have a minute just screen share real quick? Yes. I'll show, um, I'll show you guys Twitter because I know everybody um, is kind of curious about Twitter right now as far as, um, you know, political stuff coming up and whatever. Um, let me go to share this page here. And Twitter has character limits, correct? It's meant um, for like brief blogs? It does. It was 120 characters. Um, I think they expanded that to 240. And so it's literally um, just snippets. You don't want to go in there and put in big paragraphs. And, you know, you want to, if you're posting a link somewhere else, you can share that link to maybe an article and stuff like that. But so this is my Twitter. Um, and as you can see, as we scroll through, you know, if, if you live in Centerville Harry area, you know, um, the car wash, um, Flying Ace car wash there on Twitter, um, they post different contests that they have and, and information about clients. Um, if you go through here, you know, Barack Obama's posting stuff. Um, just every about everybody you can think of that's a public figure is on Twitter. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of us personally, um, if you're even if you're not posting on Twitter, it's a great way to go through here and get information about what's going on. So um, I'm going to go back to the car wash because that seems pretty um, uh, down the middle of the road here. Um, if I see this, um, I usually try to support local businesses here in, uh, in our area. And so I try to follow ones that are, are local to us. And I try to support them by going in here and I, and see this heart here down underneath this picture. Um, this is how you like stuff. So this is the equivalent to Facebook's like. So I'm going to like this photo and see it turns red. So I like that photo. Over here, if I wanted to make um, a comment about it, like vote on there, I would click on here and that pops this box up and it allows me to tweet back to, to this company. So I can say in here, um, congratulations, John. And then again, Twitter is, um, is very independent on um, hashtags. So maybe I would put in here, um, uh, local, business or something, whatever it may be or whatever. And it's going to pop up some recommendations down here that we could use. So I'm going to click there. Now that is a hashtag that I used underneath my comment. And I'm just going to quickly hit reply. Um, if you see down here, um, if we go back into there real quick, um, if I start typing something, see here, this little circle by the reply, that shows you how many more characters you have left. And when that circle gets to be close to being full, you know you're getting close to running out of characters. If I wanted to upload a photo, this little icon on the left side here would be where I go in here and then I can choose a photo. I would choose it. I don't want to post it because it's their post. I don't want to hijack it, but I would click on there, hit open. Then that would post that photo in there as well and send that. And we're going to get out of here. We're not going to save it. We're going to discard it. Um, and then if you wanted to share something, I would say this um, icon here, kind of the second one over from the left is retweet. 
I can click on it and I can say retweet, or if I wanted to comment on it before I um, retweet it, we retweeted it, um, I would click on there and that would allow me to type in a comment. So I'll just click on here and I'll retweet that. And now when I click on my profile, that shows up as something that I tweeted out and reshared with everybody. Um, and then if I wanted to tweet from scratch up here um, on the top, um, I could just type in, um, you know, what's going on. I can share a picture with it by clicking on that again. Um, I can click on to a picture and then I just hit um, tweet and send that out. Here I could add a poll or I could, I think that's a poll. Yeah, I could choose and I could do a poll with that. So if I wanted to find out what people thought about something, maybe a new program that I'm launching or something like that. Um, and then I can uh, maybe send a GIF, you know, of somebody funny or something like that. So um, kind of the quick short view of this. Um, when you find people over here, um, who to follow, or maybe I wanted to um, find, oh, now we're back at Facebook. Let me go back to that Twitter. If I wanted to find people to follow, um, maybe John, you know, whoever, this or that or whatever, um, I could click on explore over here and that will give me different things going on um, in the community and, and different stuff about COVID and whatnot. Or I could search up here and I could say, you know, I want to find out more stuff about Santa Claus. I don't know why I'm thinking about Christmas already. Um, but then this would give me different stuff and I just click on follow. And when I follow them, then they're going to start showing up like um, all these tweets down here are in my stream as well. So um, they're, the people that I follow will be down here. So quick overview so of that. Yeah, so it looks like the, the platforms are very similar in that they have similar functions and you upload photos in a similar way and you find people to follow. Yeah, everyone's just a little bit different, but but generally if you look at them, if you have an idea of, of how to do it, say like on Facebook, you have a kind of idea how to do it on the other ones. Um, the one thing to note that Instagram, um, that's the other one that's hashtag heavy on that. Um, Instagram, unless you know the secret little magic hacks, um, is basically driven on your cell phone. So if you have a smartphone, that's, uh, that's the, there's a couple hacks to do it, but that's the only official way of uploading photos is through a tablet or through a smartphone for Instagram. That's good to know. Any other questions? Last question. Beverly, did I, did I, were you, were you good with that? Okay. <laughs> I know it was we really want to thank everybody for being here. We want, and I'll do the raffles in a second. I want to thank Marianne. This was our third and final session. And we really appreciate having her with us for this. Um, it's been a great series. And the thank you to the JFS program committee, Marianne and Helene and our committee. We're actually getting ready to plan next year, believe it or not, 2021. So please send us your ideas. You can send us by email. You can call any of us. We would love to hear from you because um, we'll be planning the head, shoulders, knees, and toes in a secondary series. Big thank you to staff. Teresa and Jordan are behind the scenes making things happen for us and making sure things are smooth. So all those thank yous. Um, and with that, we have two raffles provided by Marianne Bailey, our speaker, and we're thrilled. The first one is for that Echo Dot and a one hour session with Marianne when it's safe for her to come out and set it up with you. And we have three people in this raffle. We have Bev Farnbacher, Judy Schwartzman, and Marianne Bernstein. So we've got three people. This is generating excitement, Anna. Anna. Here we go. All right. And our winner is not looking, not looking, not looking. And Judy Schwartzman. Yay, Judy! Echo Dot, and we'll get, you have Marianne's info, we'll get the info so you guys can coordinate. I know it's backwards, but Mazel Tov. Woo -hoo. <laughs> we can unmute everybody so we can hear at this point. Congratulations. And so Mazel Tov. All right, and so the other one, this bucket, is for <laughs> those who participated in two or more sessions for our mini session, three minute online session with Marianne. Or virtual session. Or virtual session. All right. And so we've got four people in here. In addition to, we have Helene Gordon also in here. Let's see. And the session is 
Marianne Bernstein. Yay. 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 Woohoo! So mazel tov to everybody. We are glad that everybody has been with us for this series. Big thank you to Marianne for sticking with us through the whole series. Absolutely. Like thank, I said. You everybody for out. thank you. I'm sorry. So thanks everybody for showing up. We are thrilled. Um, we will share the, the PDF, the file with you with the, the PowerPoint so everyone can have that and have those resources and have Marianne's contact information. And again, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Everybody. everybody be well. You too. Thank you. Bye. It was great seeing you, Eleanor. Great nice seeing to you. be here. Thank you.